Thank you. I would like all of you to take a look around you, to take in all the sights, take in all the si sounds, maybe also the smells. You feel that you see the world in all its completeness and detail. You believe that you experience the world as it is. But your experience, as it turns out, is an illusion. You experience what your mind and your brain gives you, an invented reality. In the movie The Matrix, the main character has to choose either the blue pill and stay in Wonderland, our invented dream world, or he must follow a clue, a white rabbit, to see the world as it is. As many of you know, he wanted to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. He chose the red pill. Today, I will demonstrate for you that our invented dream world is better than the real one. You do not have direct access to the physical world, either than through your senses. But your brain uses the information from your senses to create a representation of the world that makes you better adapted. This representation is called perception. How do you know that what you see is real? What is real? How do you define real? If you talk about what you can feel, what you can taste, smell and see, then real is only electrical signals interpreted by your brain. How do you know that uh, the world your brain gives you looks the same as the world your friend sees? Do you think that your brain interprets the world in the same way as the brains of other creatures on our planet? Do you think that all these sees the world as the same? Here you see a beautiful yellow flower in light visible to the human eye. And here you see the same flower in ultraviolet light, with a dark nectar guide that are visible to bees, but not to humans. Humans are perfectly able to see, for instance, animals during daylight. It's harder by night, but it doesn't matter, because we usually sleep by night. But for nocturnal animals, like snakes, that hunt by night, human vision would starve them to death. A snake would see this. They are infrared sensors enabling them to hunt by night. So these two examples show you that both the senses and the information from the senses adapt to the way of living. Here you see two gray squares. Which one of them do you think looks darkest? All of you should think that the one to the right looks darkest, because our visual system functions that way. It enhances color to the background. But if I remove the background, you can see that it's totally the same color. This is one of the examples that shows you that you do not see the world as it is. You see a better version of the world, because your brain and your retina helps you to see borders and differences. How, how do you know what is close and what is far away? The light that falls into your retina is flat. It's two-dimensional. How can you see a three-dimensional world? That's because you've learned that. Your brain has learned to see both size and shading patterns as a three-dimensional world. So look at this pan for baking muffins. Can you see that one of the cups are inverted? It pops up instead of dipping down, that one in the top center. So let's spin the pan. The other five are doomed now. Do you know what is causing the confusion here? Your brain works on assumption on the lightning of this image. It expects lights to come from a single source, shining down from above. So the only way we could have these shining patterns would be on the sloping side of a dome or dipping on a hole. So if we carefully recreate these shading patterns, 
also when it's projected to this flat canvas. Your brain reflexively creates a three-dimensional concave or convex shape. Again, I would like to show you that you do not always see the world as it is. So I would like you to stare at the dot in the middle of this royal, photo, royal castle of Norway. So just keep staring at that dot and do not move your eyes. In about 20 seconds or so, this photo will be replaced by a black and white version. But you will probably see some color. Here we go. What you should see is the same image, but with compatible colors, as your retina processes a negative image. If you look, look quickly off to the side, you will see that this photo is actually black and white after all. Our eyes are usually always in motion, not to overburden the vision cells, but with an unnatural fixation on one point, the image would burn into re your retina. This is a Norwegian superstar, an outstanding neuroscientist. Does anyone recognize her? Yeah. Her name is Maybrit Moser, and she won the Nobel Prize in Medicine last year. Let's turn this upside down photo right side up. <laughs> <laughs> When you see, look at faces, you first have to recognize that they are faces and what they are expressing really quickly. And what you focus on the most is the eyes and the mouth. That's how you figure out if someone is mad at you or want to be your friend. So in the upside down Moser face, the most important part of the face, the eyes and the mouth are right side up. So we didn't recognize that anything was off. But when we flip the whole image over, the eyes and the mouth are now upside down. And you realized that something fishy was off. You realized that your brain has taken a shortcut and missed something. But your brain isn't being lazy. It's just very busy. It spends cognitive energy as efficiently as possible and uses assumptions from visual information to create a tailored, edited vision of the world. So the next sense I would like to talk about is smell, which is one of the most underrated senses that you use to adapt to the world. So smell is often the initial response to stimuli. It alerts you to fire before you see the flames. It makes you recoil before you taste rotten food. Smell is closely linked to areas in the brain which process emotions and learning. A smell can bring a fluid of memories. It can affect your mood and even affect your work performance. And when you smell a new odor, you link it to a person, an event, or even a moment. And your brain makes a link between the smell and the memory, associating the smell of clove to gingerbread and Christmas celebration. And while some associates the smell of flowers to weddings, others associate it to funerals. So when you smell the same order again, the link is already there, ready to obtain a memory or a mood. That's part of the reason why not everyone likes the same smell. Smell is also an important part of flavor. But we have five basic tastes that we can give our mouth credit for, which is sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. But for the total flavor perception, it's not only these five basic tastes and smell that is important. It's also texture and actually also color. If you have two jellies that are completely exactly similar, but you add col red color to one of them and yellow to another one, most of you would say that the red one is sweetest and the yellow is a bit sour, just based on the color. Why? Because you've learned that. The last sense I will talk about is hearing. How can you, on a noisy mall, hear a familiar voice above all the others? Sound is just variation in air pressure that hits your eardrum. And you only hear within a certain range. 
but you hear with exactly within the range that you need. You do not need to hear communication between bats or rodents. You need to hear communication between humans. And it does. And your brain helps you to interpret what this variation in air pressure means. Without that help, without perception, you would not be able to listen to music or speak to a friend. You would not even understand that the sound you were hearing was language. If you hear a word in a language that you understand, that word is not only sound to you, it's meaning. And you perceive that word, whether it's said with a deep voice or a light voice, whether it's shouted or whispered. I will give you some letter strings and I would like you to read them. Start with this one. The brain helps us to understand what we see, feel, taste and hear through perception. And the next one. Perception is why we see the world in colors. You are able to read this because you have perception, because your brain helps you to see the pattern, even though half the letters is missing. What about this one? Perception converts decibel and hertz to music. Even here, you are able to read it, even though it's only the first and the last letter which is in the right place, and the rest is a total mess, because your brain reads a word as a whole. And this one. Perception is why flowers smell good. This might be a bit harder. Perception is why a meal tastes. Even here, when I mix letters and numbers, many of you are able to read it. And most amazingly, you are able to read handwriting. Look, for instance, at the bees. None of them are alike. But still, you are able to read it because of perception. Perception is better than reality. But at the same time, perception is our reality. Although you can never be absolutely sure that what you interpret from your senses is correct, you can be confident that what you interpret makes you better adapted to the world you live in. Would you like to live in a world without colors, without, without the ability to see what is close and what is far away? What would it be without perception? without the ability to recognize faces and what they are expressing, with a world that was flat and two-dimensional, without interpretation from your senses, you would not understand art. We would not even have a culture. Why hunt rabbits? Thank you. <laughs>